It's time for The Line of Fire with your host, activist, author, international speaker, and theologian, Dr. Michael Brown, your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Michael Brown is the director of the Coalition of Conscience and president of Fire School of Ministry. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. That's 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Welcome, friends, to the Line of Fire broadcast, 866-34-TRUTH, number to call. Michael Brown, delighted to be with you. We have focused additionally on the subject of Israel, the Jewish people, the Middle East, because of the Christ at the Checkpoint conference that is taking place right now in Bethlehem. I want to repeat what I said yesterday, to the extent, to the extent that Israel is guilty of inflicting or uh, suffering on the Jewish people to the extent, uh, on the Palestinian people, excuse me, to the extent that Israel's actions are unjust or harsh, to that degree we need to call Israel to account. To the degree that the primary suffering of the Palestinians, Palestinian Christians, is due to Uh, the decisions that have been made by the Muslim and Arab leadership in this generation and past generations to the extent that Israel is being wrongly portrayed, then by all means we need to speak up for the truth in that regard. And my great concern with the Christ uh, Christ at the Checkpoint conference is that people will leave that conference with hostility towards Israel and the Jewish people, thinking that there is this horrific wall that Israel built to oppress the Palestinians when it was simply built a security fence with 3 to 4% as an actual wall, and it was built to keep murderers out and snipers from killing men, women, and children. To that extent, uh, I am grieved over where the conference would go, to the extent that it will not recognize God's purposes for Israel. According to the scriptures, I am grieved. I want to play a couple of clips for you, and then I'm going to bring on a guest. He is a Palestinian Christian. I cannot ask every kind of detailed question because he lives in uh, Palestinian territory, uh, and there is uh, radical Islam and other issues there to, to deal with and to recognize. But there is a call for boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel Uh, It's an ugly campaign. It is a harmful campaign. It is one that hurts Israel and the Jewish people. I want you to hear a couple of clips on the side of this and then against it. Clip number 11. These are not imagined scenarios. Our tuition dollars are profiting off of death. Divestment is the next step. This is not about a nation or a people, but what's being done to people In our names, with our currency, this university will not liberate anyone, but it can choose to cease making a buck off of misery. Vote yes for divestment. No to appeasement. Affirming injustice isn't positive for any climate. All right, that's what Remy Kanazi has to say. I want you to hear Ben Shapiro. He is a journalist and a radio host and a UCLA grad. He was speaking at a large gathering at UCLA, and he was very upset as to what was happening. I've never been more ashamed to be a Bruin. I've never been more ashamed to be an alumnus of this university than to see this divestment petition being considered at this level. To pretend that this is about occupation, to pretend this is about peace, to pretend this is about anything but vile and despicable Jew hatred is a lie. There is a reason. There's only one reason we are discussing Israel and not discussing Saudi Arabia. There's only one reason we are discussing Israel and not discussing Iran. There's only one reason we are discussing Israel and not discussing Palestine. There's only one reason we are discussing Israel and not discussing the vast bevy of human rights violations that happen every day in the Middle East, exponentially worse than what happens in Israel. Double standards, double standards, double standards. My guest, Palestinian Christian pastor, when we come back.
It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get into the Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Welcome, friends, to the Line of Fire broadcast. I've got a very special guest about to join me. 866-34-TRUTH. I may get to some calls, but because of the special guests I've had, David Brog in the first hour and now Pastor Stephen Curry of the Holy Land Mission, I may not be able to get to calls in the, the next half hour. Uh, Stephen has been following Jesus since 1990. He has a great burden to reach fellow Arabs with the gospel of Jesus uh, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us on the Line of Fire. You're in the States right now? Yes, sir, uh, Dr. Brown. Thank you for having me on this show. I really appreciate it. Uh, please tell me about your own upbringing, uh, where you grew up, and, and what your background was religiously and ethnically. Sure. I'm a born-again Israeli, Palestinian, Arab, uh, born in Jerusalem. That's a big mouthful because there's a lot that comes with it. My father was brought, uh, born into a Greek Orthodox family in Jerusalem. He moved to Bethlehem, started the church there at age 10. I gave my life to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I grew up under the father, uh, my father, who uh, believed in both the infallible Word of God of the Old and the New Testament. It's not one uh, without the other, one or either. It's both the Old and the New. And the God that we serve is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the past 10 years, we've been known to be the persecuted ministry because of much of the suffering and, and uh, discrimination and persecution and martyrdom that our ministry have experienced with taking the stand of being an evangelistic ministry, not ashamed of the gospel, but also a ministry that believes in God's promises, believes in, in the love and acceptance of the Jewish people, and believes that uh, God has a plan for the Jewish people, which he, he, he planned out in the Old and the New Testament. All right. So would you say that your viewpoint, recognizing God's plan for the Jewish people, is a minority one among Palestinian Christians? Um, to say minority is actually understatement. Uh, my father and I are the only two evangelical uh, uh, Arab pastors in the Palestinian territories that do do not promote this replacement theology. We do not promote uh, this teaching of uh, God is done with the Jewish people. Um, we believe that God has a plan for them, and, um, and by loving them, we are fulfilling Romans uh, 9, 10, and 11. By reaching out to them, if, if Jewish people see that Arabs love them because of a Jewish Messiah named Jesus Christ, um, and just loves them because we're just taught to love them with no hidden agendas, then that could be the strongest light it can possibly be. All right, Stephen, uh, it's wonderful to hear you share these things. We're really hoping to meet with you a few months from now during our tour of Israel. And I, I know that you speak freely and passionately, but you also use great wisdom uh, because there, there are many that, that would not like what you're doing or what your father's doing. When you speak about persecution, opposition, um, what what do you feel free to share with us? What can you tell us? Sure, brother. The sentiment that's going on right now that there is no persecution in um, in in the Palestinian territories uh, within the Holy Land, and that is um, that is a slap in the face of many of the Christians that have left the land because of the, the violence, because of the growth of uh, of uh, what's going on there. Here's what I can share, uh, Dr. Brown, is that there is no persecution in, in the Arab community, as long as you're not outstanding or outspoken about what you believe. Um, just a few weeks, just about four months ago, a young Muslim man, we came to our church to learn the Bible. After three and a half months of discipling him, his uh, mom, his mom uh, talked to him about his change in faith, or, or she noticed something different about him. He woke up in the morning after confessing his mom that he's now sitting down with with a with a with a believer. His mom got so worried um, and concerned that he's been brainwashed. He actually brought his father and his uncle, and they actually beat him. He ran away and came back two days home, and they, they called the the Palestinian Authority on him. His charges 
religious blasphemy and religious attack. That's his police charge, which I have in my hand. Mm. All simply for one, simply for wanting to ask questions to his parents about Jesus Christ, and simply about asking questions about who Jesus Christ is in the Quran. And this is a this is a young man that I've, that I've dealt with. He sat in jail for seven days. I went to visit him in jail, and I looked at him in his face, and he says something. He says, "I have done nothing wrong." I've done, he kept telling me, I've done nothing wrong. This is a young man uh, that has never been, has no current records. His charge was simply religious blasphemy and religious attack. And, and, and where, mom, tell us where again this is taking place. What city in Israel? In Bethlehem. Okay. So this is not in Gaza under Hamas. This is Bethlehem. But at the same time, Stephen, there is a conference taking place. I say at the same time right now, Christ at the Checkpoint and at the the beginning of the the conference, um, uh, Bishra Awad, former president of Bethlehem Bible College, said, "As evangelicals, we pledge our allegiance to Palestinian President Abbas and the Prime Minister." Uh, it seems that they're having this open Christian conference with the blessing of the Palestinian Authority, and yet you're saying that if you're outspoken about your faith, it can be trouble. Uh, we're getting two different pictures in the West here. Can you can you help us sort that out? Yeah. Sure, sure, Dr. Brown. Um, there's only so much, again, as you understand, there's only so much I can share because I, I live in two streets down the block from these kind of folks. Here's the thing. And you'd, li- you'd like to keep living for a while, as long as the it, Lord... Exactly. At least, <laughs> right. it's, you know, fe- fear of dying is not a, something on my agenda. I, I've been beaten and we've been shot at and you name it, but that's, that's a long... We'll probably need another program for that, but um, it's just that uh, we want to be able to do as much as we can before we go. So... Here's, here's, let me, let me quickly give you three, two or three points, uh, if, if I may. One, the main underlying problem is this. These are folks that are guiding the Bible with their emotions, rather the Bible guiding their emotions. That say is, that again. I believe. Yeah. Please say that again. That, sure. These are folks that are guiding the Bible with their emotions, rather than the Bible guiding their emotions. The minute you start to 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 transform and to and to 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 sort of uh, push the Bible into your own track because of a of an emotional thing that you've had growing up, or because of an emotional thing that your parents or great grandparents have had growing up, then that I believe is is sort of the next step down from the formidable sin of of, abom- of, of the abomination of of uh, you know cursing the Holy Spirit. I think that just goes right along there because then that's where apostasy starts to happen. That's where a, a, a wrong Bible teaching happens, and this is what's going on here on the ground. Number two, these are Palestinian evangelical Christians that are, I believe, are signing their own uh, death release because the Palestinian Authority does not recognize the evangelical church movement. They delegitimize the evangelical church. They refuse to accept the evangelical church as a legitimate church. Why is the PA asking the world to recognize them, but yet they are not accepting to recognize the evangelical church movement? I wrote an article and I did a big press release on Fox News and other and other um, and other sources last year. And the way they responded to these things, without directly mentioning my name in their writing or in their articles is that, well, the PA is building its own infrastructure. And so basically they're actually standing up and defending the PA, justifying the PA, uh, PA's discrimination and PA singling out of the evangelical church. The third point, where were all these people before the wall went up? Where were all these folks when uh, there was uh, suicide bombings and there was killing and bloodshed? That is my question. The fourth point, uh, my 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 friend D- David Brog, who is a good friend of mine, I've had the privilege to sit down to him face to face, and and he said something to me that stood out to me. He said, Pastor Curry, the existence of the Arab Palestinian Christians in the Holy Land is important for me. He said it's important for me, but we need to find evangelical Christians that we can trust. Evangelical Christians that are going on the Bible. So I I, I love David Brog. He's a, he's a good friend of mine, and I he's actually a brother to me. And the, 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 he wrote an article, a very passionate article. And actually, I could just see his cry in his article. He's, 
uh, the, the, actually, it's a desperateness. And I, and I just want to challenge David Brog. I want to encourage David Brog. I want to encourage you and others who are sensing the fear of this crisis at the checkpoint. I just got a call 20 minutes ago from one of my friends who is attending there every day to sort of see and sense what's going on. And, and he's sensing much desperateness on their end. So I want to challenge everybody that's listening who is uh, concerned about Israel, who, who, who is rightfully concerned about what's going on there, to not be afraid. Um, just like they have concerns, just like they are nervous, uh, you know, we have not lost the battle, um, and the battle is that we must we must love each other, but we must be honest and transparency and trans and integrity is essential in this yeah, situation. Yeah, truth. We can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. Pastor Stephen, please stay right there. I've got a bunch of questions I want to ask you. I appreciate your courage. I commend you for your heart to honor the Lord at any cost. It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown, your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Thanks, friends, for joining us today on the Line of Fire. My special guest, Palestinian Christian leader, Pastor Stephen Corey of the Holy Land Mission. He's currently working on a multi-purpose worship center in Jerusalem. Uh, Pastor Stephen, we've often heard that... Christian population in Bethlehem is declining, and it's the fault of Israel. The the two big issues I have with that, number one, there's the assault on Christianity throughout the Muslim world and the Middle East in countries like Egypt and Syria and Iraq, and then on a larger scale in northern Nigeria and other places like that. So, So we see the effect of radical Islam on Christianity, the persecution worldwide, I don't know how you can separate Bethlehem from that larger picture. And then specifically, my understanding was that there was a lot more freedom until the Palestinian Authority took over Bethlehem. Was it in the in the mid 90s? Uh, But you're you're a native there. You're a citizen there. Uh, Tell me your perspective. Sure, brother. We when I'm asked this question by, by many folks, I we have to be careful how to, how to respond to people that truly have suffered. Here's, here's the reality. Like I said, I was born in Jerusalem, and I grew up in my, all my life in Bethlehem, minus the years I went to the college in the U.S. Other than that, I'm, I'm there all my life. Here's what we have to be careful at. There are people that have suffered because of the closer of the wall in Bethlehem. Is this a realistic thing? Yes. They have people suffered from lack of jobs, have people suffered from lack of transportation, and then people feel like they're in a big prison? Yes. And many of these people that feel that way are, this, are the same people that never, uh, that never did have anything to do with political fighting and so forth. Now, here's where we have to be careful. Did Israel put up the wall to, to suffer the Christians? Did Israel put up the wall to intentionally suffer the Palestinian uh, Muslims? I don't believe that, uh, because I go back to the 80s and 90s, where there was still uh, freedom fighting. That's what they call themselves, freedom fighters, where they throw Israeli, they throw rocks at Israeli soldiers, and you know they light up the tires in the, in the middle of the streets. And I was one of those kids that did the same thing, we lit up tires and threw rocks. Even when that was going on, we were, quote-unquote, resistance to the, quote-unquote, op- occup- occupation. There was never a checkpoint. We, as a little, you know, as a little kid, we'd, we'd throw rocks from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And at one, Jewish people would be having hummus and shawarma and falafels and buying vegetables from that same street that we that we were throwing rocks from. It's just that there, it took a turn, and the turn that the, the, the intifada, second intifada, took forced the arm and forced the wrist of those that were in the land who had the power, which is the state of Israel, had the power, who had the resources who had the governing power to 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 take we, we twisted the arms of those that are above us and and for saying such statements as I'm saying not, not right now um I I could get killed for it within you know within 24 hours but you know uh, the reality is I'm I'm speaking to you the voice of thousands and thousands of thousands of what people really know and feel in their heart just nobody's willing to speak their heart because of fear of retaliation what would happen to them but that is the two points that I would answer you is that um, and I will summarize summarize it one more time is one we do not we cannot dismiss that there is suffering 
we cannot dismiss that there are people hurting and, and are paying a price because of uh, uh, the wall that was placed there uh, uh, by the Israeli government. We cannot, we cannot dismiss that suffering. I have members in my church that, that can't get jobs anymore, they, uh, and so forth. And that has created a prison within a prison, meaning Palestinian Christians that are stuck between a rock and a hard place. They can't speak out against the Palestinian Authority, because now behind, they're behind the wall. There's nowhere to run. And they can't speak up against the Israelis because if they do, then their name will be put on this computer that will be blacklisted. So what do they do? Even though down deep in their hearts, they know and they believe 100 percent they, they are much better off under the Israeli government's ruling, without a doubt. I mean, even those that are fighting fanatically okay, will, will admit to that. It's just that none of them are willing to look in the mirror and ask themselves the right questions. This is not my philosophy only. I'm just reverberating what's going on in the minds and the hearts of the people in the streets in Bethlehem, Ramallah, and so forth. Many are fighting for a cause of Palestinian authority. Many of them are fi- fighting for the cause of freedom. Let's fight for the cause of freedom. Let's fight for the cause of freedom. That's what they're fighting for, the cause of freedom. But the thing is, that same freedom, I believe, is that same thing that will, will bring an end to our existence. Yeah, and again, the security fence and wall were put up to keep murderers out. Pastor Stephen, two more quick questions, then we're out of time. One, the Israeli Arabs, if they were given the choice of being under Hamas or Palestinian Authority or living under Israeli government, what choice would they make? If the majority will tell you, eh, leave us alone, we want to be under Israel. That's And that's not my opinion again. That's what I'm hearing from the streets. That's what I'm hearing from people. That's what I'm uh, hearing people tell me in my face. Leave us alone. Don't suck us into this situation. We want to be left alone. Some of them, some of them want, want to help the Palestinian cause, but yet they themselves don't want to be under the Palestinian cause, which is kind of ironic and, and contradicting right. in a way. And right. there's a lot. I, I think what's important for, for the viewers who are listening right now to understand, is, and, 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 and I'm telling you, people like David Brock, who is looked at as, as an anti-Arab Zionistic person, I think, I think people like David Brock are the people that are going to build the peace, because these are men that love the Arab people. Uh, these are men that know, David Brock and others know, that there are Arabs that want peace, there are Arabs that want hope. And, and there's a lot of good, and, and this is, again, I need to make sure to understand this, because it, those that are passionate, Dr. Brown, about Israel and the Palestinian situation are sometimes blinded. They're either blinded against Israel or blinded against the Arab community. And we have to be careful, because that's how we are easily being dismissed nowadays. And the, what I want to share with, with being careful at is there are many good, nice, kind, peaceful Muslims and peaceful uh, Christian Palestinians in the land. Now, how much of a Muslim are they in the, in the Islamic eye? That's another, that's another whole show. <laughs> you know, and how much of a Christian are they in the eyes of the Bible? That's another program as well. But as human beings, there are many good people in there, but the problem is they will never speak out because nobody's empowered them to do so. Yes. Uh, Stephen, I greatly appreciate you being with us. We've got to have you back where we can get a whole hour together. But thank you for your time, for your courage. Just got 30 seconds. If folks want to follow what you're doing, pray for you, connect with you, help financially, is there a website or anywhere they can go? We are a, 501, we are a 501c3 in the U.S. It's Holy Land missions.org holylandmissions.org all right dear brother hope to see you in israel may god's strength be yours and your families and may the lord use you to bring many of your people to the knowledge of jesus thank you once again for joining us amen glory to god thank you my brother thank you